Hi guys, I'm the Spoken Label. Straight over to the Magnificent Steve now. He's going to read out an extract of his book. Over to you, buddy. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to be reading from yesteryear. Um, and I'm going to start the book. The way I structured it, Fran Stryker was, of course, a, a radio script writer. So it's structured like a radio script. Um, the chapters are episodes. And uh, I'm going to read the introduction um, and then the part of the first chapter. Um, so with the introduction, just like a radio script, the top of the page, it says, music up, announcer. Stryker is dead. Barrett read the article on page 53 of the Buffalo Evening News, not on the front page where it belonged. The newspaper shook in his hands, the headline blurred by tears. He'd been killed in a late afternoon car crash, a head-on collision that sent the other driver and his granddaughter to the hospital. Barrett was certain the accident had been Stryker's fault. He could picture the crash as, as if he was reading one of his radio scripts. Stryker behind the wheel, a lucky dangling between his lips. The window cracked to let smoke coil into the autumn air. As his mind drifted from the highway to storylines, from storylines to characters, and finally from characters to scenes, the things that always cluttered Stryker's mind, his car had drifted across the double yellow lines and into the path of the oncoming station wagon. He didn't die on impact. He had time to be surprised by the final plot twist. Barrett was sure that a striker sat pinned behind the steering wheel, his vision tunneling. He must have been thinking of the many ways he could describe the details surrounding the accident. The blood streaming from his scalp, laboring lungs about to quit, the cold spreading to his limbs. So his readers or listening audience would feel as if they were beside him, watching and hearing him die. The article listed all that Stryker had accomplished in chronological order, but Barrett had known him before all that, before the radio and TV shows, before the books and comics, before his characters had become cultural phenomena. Barrett knew him when they were both young and Buffalo, New York was brimming with gangsters and bootleggers, dames and dolls, and there were not many heroes to be found, except for the two of them. They were best friends back when bathtub, blind, bathtub gin blinded, when magic shimmered on Buffalo sidewalks like lost silver waiting to be found, back when Barrett was the original Lone Ranger. Stryker is dead, that much was certain, and Barrett hadn't spoken to him in 30 years. Return with us now to those thrilling days. Episode one, Slattery's Rings. The magic didn't always occur at the typewriter. Sometimes it appeared after midnight, swirling over Buffalo's cobblestone streets like Christmas snow, accumulating on shoulders and hat brims, the pregnant flakes never melting. Tonight was such a night. When the clock struck 12, the, bay, the bell in St. John's steeple rung across Colonial Circle, echoed off General Bidwell's bronze statue, and reached Franz Stryker's house at 26 Granger Place. He looked up from his Remington 16 typewriter, his slender fingers poised above the keyboard, and cocked his head. The clapper striking the hour, hour returned him from his world of heroes and villains to his attic writing studio, where his desk was tucked under a sloping eave. He checked his watch, certain a mistake had occurred, that time had accelerated, that he had somehow been transported into the future. It couldn't be midnight already. This was his witching hour, the moment his neighbors and extended family insisted that he stop his relentless typing, complaining that the hammer's continuous striking the single bell announcing each margin end, the sliding carriage being returned and returned and returned were keeping them awake, preventing them from rising early to search for jobs that did not exist. He leaned back in his chair and stretched his arms towards heaven. A forgotten lucky strike smoldered in a littered ashtray. He reached for it, his fingertips nicotine golden, 
and took a final drag before stubbing it out. So that's that's the opening. Excellent stuff indeed. Really, really, really evocative reading, that, Steve. Brilliant, brilliant stuff, that, mate. So I've got to ask you, obviously, have you doing a lot of readings, obviously, already in preparation for the launch of the book in October to wrap up with? Have you found, like... Has your approach to actually reading it changed over the time, all the time you've been reading it so far? Well, you know, my whole reading really has changed over the last five mm. years. Um, mm. And I know that's I know that for a fact because I, I got a, uh, a certificate today. I've been volunteering for a group for the past five years here in, in town called the, the Niagara Frontier Re Radio Reading Service. And that um, I go on Friday, Sunday mornings, and for 58 minutes, I read fiction, um, and it's recorded and broadcast out to the, the visually impaired and those who can't physically hold a book in their hands. So after reading for doing this for five years now, I've noticed that I, I really slowed down the way I, I read. Um, I used mm. to be a very fast reader um, publicly. Now I, I've slowed things down a lot. Um, I take uh, much more time working on the enunciation um, and the, the inflection of my voice. Um, and it's all from that volunteer work. It was kind of a, a happy a happy coincidence or happy result of doing that that, that volunteer work. And today uh, I went in and they gave me my five-year certificate because I, I missed the, the party um, wow. that we had. Wow. Um, so, so that was really um, has changed my reading um, more than reading yesteryear. Um, and just reading other people's work uh, on the radio, and yeah, it's it different goes, because I I know I know what's coming next, right? Because I wrote this one. But when I'm reading, I wrote I was reading from Tom Tom Hanks, the movie actor, has a novel out, um, and I read from that this morning. I didn't know it was you know what the next word was going to be or you know hmm. anything. So it, that makes reading challenging because it's really a cold read. Um, so something like this. Um, it's an easier, a much easier read. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with you. I've done it before now for people where, because I'm quite a slow reader, but it's on purpose and emphasis. Certainly when I was a younger reader, I used to write, read, like you said, 200 words a minute. And you'd have people sat there thinking, what has he just read? Didn't understand a word. So you, you, you <laughs> learn, exactly. don't you, just to pace out a lot. But no, I get it. Very, very great stuff, mate. He does like it. It's so perfectly read that I thought yeah you could tell that you're well versed in that book of reading excellent stuff mate so good luck with it definitely so keep in touch when your next call was out in 2025 I should be doing this podcast so there's no reason why I won't be unless <laughs> it really goes wrong right so I tell people I've been, doing it, I've been doing it for seven years now I would like to do it another seven if possible which who knows that I would say definitely so anyway with this mate keep in touch so we'll wrap up here anyway so Thank you today, Vistine. Absolutely. It's been an absolute pleasure, mate. I've loved, loved this today, mate. Oh, thank you so much for having me, and, and I'm looking forward to talking to your dad. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what we can arrange on that one. Right? All right. So you might end up with him saying, what? What? <laughs> oh, I'm used to that. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Okay, dokie, okay, guys and girls. That's it for the Spoken Label today, as always, mate. I want to thank Steve again. It's been a pleasure to make. So, as I always say, and I always say this because I'm going to do as Don Callis over at AEW Wrestling says, stay safe. But more importantly, stay damn over. And we will see you all been well next 